Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I have a time-lapse painting for you. I filled another page in my watercolor sketchbook and I painted this mousse, a very loose uh, kind of stylistic painting here. And it took a couple hours, so I'm gonna condense the footage down, give a little sort of voiceover about my process, sort of the colors I used, and how I developed it as I went along and all of those lovely details so you'll get a sense of kind of where my head was at while I was working. Before I get into the video, I did want to share my website with you. It is CoreyFrankCreates.com. It's the best way to get in touch with me. You can sign up for my weekly email newsletter there and in return you'll get my free no-brainer watercolor supplies guide, which is just a single page PDF with links to products I would recommend based on a variety of budgets. So that can be really helpful when you're first starting out and aren't sure what supplies to get. I also have my online art shop as well as my online courses for when you're really ready to dive deeper into watercolor and get comprehensive material from kind of beginner to more advanced. So that is all there. I would love for you to go check it out. Again, it is CoreyFrankCreates.com. All right, without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this video. So you can see I have a sketch in this watercolor notebook here, and I do apologize. Uh, I didn't realize that the phone was focusing on my hand rather than the paper, so I know that uh, the painting right now is out of focus. I do apologize. I had to put my hand there to help uh, block the light a little bit so I could actually see my pencil lines because they were so light. And yeah, that just unfortunately, uh, the camera wound up focusing on my hand. So I, th I try to address it later in the video, uh, so hopefully that gets a little better. But uh, when I'm in a space that's not my normal studio, sometimes it's just hard to find an ideal spot to set up. So that was the case this time. And again, I know my hand is blocking where I'm actually painting, so I do apologize for that. This is not, uh, you know, one of my greatest quality videos, but that's just how it goes sometimes. But I wanted to post something so you at least have it. So I've been working mostly at this point with the wet on wet technique. So laying down a thin layer of water on my paper surface and then going ahead and adding the pigment to it so that it kind of spreads very loosely and evenly. And then now uh, as I get to some of these areas that have darker shadow, uh, maybe waiting for the water to sink into the page a little more before I add the pigment just so it can be really nice and dark and as opaque as possible. So you can see I'm using a whole array of rainbow colors and here now the focus is a bit better. I, I tried to make sure you know that I was touching the screen where the painting was rather than on my hand so it would focus in the correct spot so uh, hopefully that will do better for the rest of the video. I've switched up back and forth here through with a, uh, between several different brushes. So I started out with those looser washes with my size eight round brush. That is the one that you just see right here. And then I have a couple smaller detail brushes as well. I have a size zero, which is very tiny for very small details, as well as a size four, which is a fairly small brush, but can also cover, you know, slightly larger areas. When I turn it on its side, this is the size four right here that I'm using. So that really helped me to be able to get uh, into the those smaller areas on the antlers where you know there's not as much of a surface area to cover and I'm using colors kind of all over the board here so I, I had some on that tip of the nose there's Viridian green I've been using several different browns like sepia brown is my darkest brown as well as some burnt sienna for a very orangey brown I also used some cadmium orange some cadmium yellow I've used my dioxazine purple as well as let's see I think some ultra marine blue on the sort of top portion of the nose where it's lighter there. So lots of different colors happening here. I'm so sorry. Again, the hand is just totally in the way. So <laughs> uh, that's just how this video is going to be. But at least it's something rather than, than nothing. So that's just how it goes sometimes. Uh, I have switched to that very small brush. Well, actually, no, this is the size four. So now I have my very tiny brush so I can paint that eye. I'm using Payne's Gray as well as a bit of sepia brown in there. And I also used a little bit of ultramarine blue, very lightly diluted for that highlight in the eye because it wasn't a pure white. It had a little bit of blue in it. 
And yeah, the, that detail brush is perfect for kind of adding just a, uh, the really small details, painting small areas, adding a couple little strokes that make it look like fur. Although with this painting, I wound up not focusing as much on having a lot of fur details. I really wanted more to have variation in light and shadow and some color temperatures. So like on the tip of the nose, you have that cooler green and kind of blue and then much warmer colors on the antlers where there is a lot of uh, burnt sienna. I have my sepia brown for the dark shadows and then I'm also using brown matter for that really red brick color. It's such a gorgeous rich tone. Really adds a lot of uh, saturation to it. So uh, yep, and then uh, Payne's Gray, I almost always love using that in place of black. It just, uh, I think it has a richer tone, so using that. And this wound up being a very overall loose painting. I'm using a lot of wet into wet technique, except in a few strategic areas, like on those antlers where there's little strokes next to the highlights to add that uh, sort of texture of the straight, like almost striated bone basically. Uh, but you can see here where even on the main part of the antler, I laid down water first and then when I add the paint over the top, it just spreads really easily and in nice thin layers. So uh, it's kind of fun to experiment with, with that a bit. Uh, I, I'm someone who when I decide to work very detailed, I can get very painstaking with it. Uh, well, and painstaking is, it's, it's not painful, I enjoy it, but it, it can go a lot slower and really take a lot of time to build it up. So my goal with this was to actually be more quick and loose with it and just have the variations in light and dark uh, and try and have some contrast, especially with, for instance, those highlights on the antlers where the light is hitting versus, uh, you know, sort of the darker underside of the, of the antlers. And then as well too on the body here where I'm really starting to lay in some of those darker tones. And I took some liberties. It, uh, the reference image, by the way, I normally get from Unsplash, but this time it's from Pixabay and they also have some a copyright free or royalty free images. So that's linked in the description if you're curious to see what my initial reference image is. Uh, but I took some liberty for sure on that nose because I knew that I didn't want to have a a background around the whole moose. I just decided to put some really dark washes right around the antlers to make the light white bony parts of the antlers really spring forward. Uh, but for the rest of it, I didn't, didn't really want to have to paint around the moose. I wanted the moose to just be against a white background for the most part. So that uh, the highlight on the nose in the original image, I took a liberty and went ahead and darkened it a bit. So there would be a nice differential between the edge of the nose and the white of the paper. But still working a lot of wet into wet technique using a bunch of my Payne's Gray here to get those really dark tones. And then really going in with some dark dioxazine purple. I also use a decent amount of the Burnt Sienna to bring in those really warm tones. I, we're starting to get into fall and so I just felt like it just it seemed appropriate to have some really orangey kind of fall rust tones. So uh, that's just how I this piece um, just felt like it needed that kind of mood to it. And I also realized there were a couple spots where I wasn't as careful when I was painting around the antler, so I cut a couple of the antlers off <laughs> on that left side, but that's okay. It's, it's totally recognizable. You can see what it is, and I really do love playing around with this looser style, uh, but having that contrast between that loose wash and then especially on that right side of the antlers, the very... A light highlight have it very defined so again it just pops right out at you that creates a nice visual contrast or a focal point basically where the eye just automatically gets kind of drawn to that area so adding just little touches here and there of some of that wet into wet getting a little more detail in the not detail in the body just um, darkening some shadows and then of course I do my fun splatter as well as adding a signature here and that took me to the end of the piece in just a couple hours. There you have it.
Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that and found it helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it. Until my next one, be kind to yourself, be kind to others. God bless, and I will see you soon.